What is happening everyone? Welcome back to the show. I'm Timmy Feedy. Uh, follow me on Instagram at Timmy underscore Feedy. Uh, go to www.timmyfeedy.com uh, for more great recipes and head over to um, YouTube, well, which you're probably already on if you're watching this. Uh, and you can find me on, uh, just search Timmy Feedy or follow the link in my bio from uh, my Instagram page and uh, you should be able to find me. So today we're gonna be doing our brisket now, I probably should have got up a bit earlier to do this, but I didn't, so um, we're gonna just see how it goes. Now, this brisket, really what I needed was an untrimmed brisket with all the fat on it so that I could take that off myself, but, and actually leave a layer of fat on it if I was gonna do it for ages in the smoker. That isn't gonna work with this piece because I just don't think there's enough fat on it. So what I'm gonna do, and this is the sort of thing you should think about as well, if you don't quite have exactly what you were after, there's ways that you can adapt this stuff. So what I'm gonna do is put this on the smoker for a couple of hours, get that smoke flavor kind of embedded into the meat, and then I'm gonna actually put it in the oven, cover it, douse it in my homemade barbecue sauce mixture that I've got, and just kind of really slow cook and kind of let that cook in its own juices and that should hopefully keep the moisture in it that we, we're not going to get from the fat because you can kind of see it's quite it's not a hugely fatty cut i mean there is some nice strands of fat through it um so yeah so we're going to give it a go and see what happens and i got this brisket from uh millen's free range butchers so it's like a really beautiful piece of um uh sort of grass fed beef um, we're just going to unwrap this and then you could um, trim a few bits off maybe so we might have a look at that yeah looking pretty pretty damn good so there might be some bits of fat that you could maybe cut off but I don't know this has been out of the fridge for about half an hour, but don't go much more than that because it's going to be harder to trim the fat off. And I've just got a little bowl over there that I'm chucking these off cuts bits in because you can't really do a lot with this stuff. I mean, you could render it down and for the fat if you wanted to. Um, and because, um, I mean, I'm still learning all this stuff. So it's a bit of a work in progress. But I mean, probably that bit of fat we might just, I don't know, maybe that's okay. It's like if the fat feels like really hard, it's probably not gonna be great to eat. You want the fat to be kind of soft and pliable, which, you know, this probably isn't quite right, but it's um it should be fine really so i mean this is a bit of an experiment so i just have to sort of see what happens really i'm just going to give it a go and uh see what happens so so like i said we're going to um pop this into the smoker and give it a couple of hours in there and get that flavor going nicely um and uh yeah that's basically it and then once that happens we'll do the next stage where we pop it in the oven kind of coat it in sauce and just let it kind of do its thing i'm going to be cooking it quite low so that the sugar in the sauce shouldn't be a problem so what i've got here this is my little mix that i made the other day when i did my ribs so this is a mixture of salt pepper and um paprika and i've got a bit more of this mix without the paprika in it left over from the other day as well that I didn't put in here. So I'm just gonna add this into here. And then we're going to sprinkle it over this on both sides. We're probably gonna rub a bit of mustard on it as well, just to help this stuff stick properly. There, it is a bit moist on the outside still, but it's um, a little bit of mustard should, should, should do nicely. So let's just mix that up a little bit, turn it around, give it a little shake up. Yeah, that's pretty good. So let's just grab our mustard. And we're only gonna do a thin bit. So just a little sprinkle over like that. And then with, with your one hand that you're gonna sort of have as your kind of dirty hand, just rub that over.
beautiful and that's just a normal american mustard but um which i like because it's quite mild so if you're going to do uh, an english mustard or something then um do a mild one if you can get it so that's good all around the edges looking good just get that into the sides then we're gonna open up our little sprinkler thing and then i'm just gonna sprinkle this over in nice even passes and just go across maybe go back across again then I'm just holding my hand out the side and just sort of pressing on the edge to get it on the edges because it'd be hard to it's hard to kind of get that on there and we're not going to rub this in we're just going to sort of pat it on I want to get this face as well nice just a little bit more and this yeah literally just salt pepper paprika that's all it is really so super simple and then we're going to just carefully turn that over onto that side do our mustard again beautiful rub that in And don't be afraid of the mustard if you're not into mustard. This isn't really going to flavour it a whole lot. Like you're not going to notice it if you're not a fan of mustard. It's just really subtle by the time it all cooks in. So there we go. And then we'll just repeat the step. Sprinkle it over here. Nice back and forth. Coating across as we go. And the one thing to remember, if you're going to use a smoker like I've got, which is one of these Traeger grills, just um, always put a pan of uh, hot water in there with it, which will help to keep the moisture in the meat. It just keeps the humidity up inside the chamber. Just put a little bit more. Well, we run out, so that'll have to do. We've got a little bit more here, but. So that's good. And just pat that down. I think that's pretty good. We can, if we want a bit of extra, we can just sort of put it, and I've done with the wrong hand, but in mind. You can see I'm just pushing my fingers on the board, just tapping that on the sides. Oh, that's not rubbed in very well. Perfect, so that'll do. Super simple, salt, pepper, paprika, bit of mustard. That's, that's perfect. So now what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna put this on this um, sort of tray, this kind of, this is a cooling rack essentially, but I'll put this on there because then it's a lot easier to just take it out of the smoker and move it around. So um, yeah, so I think that's quite a good idea. So we'll pop this on here and um, get it in the smoker. We're gonna, I'm gonna give it two hours in the smoker on 130 degrees. Remember with the pan of water in there as well. You can just use a normal saucepan or a metal bowl like one of these things and uh, so we'll come back in two hours and I'll show you what we're gonna do next. Right, what is happening everybody? There is our brisket that has been in the oven for, not in the oven, in our barbecue for about three hours. What I've done uh, about halfway through, about an hour in, I gave it a little spritz with this uh, apple cider vinegar in this spray bottle, which is the same thing we use for our barbecue ribs, which you can go back and have a look at that recipe. So what I did originally say was that I did, um, I put it in 130 degrees, but I actually turned that down to 120 degrees centigrade and gave that three hours, not two hours, because I thought that was about right. And it's um, kind of just like kind of the, the edges have kind of dried out a bit. It's just kind of nicely smoked, but it's still got a nice bit of squish to it. So if we had more fat on this, we could have left it in for longer and done it like a normal brisket and I'd have spritzed this a few more times, left it in, adjusted the temperature and gradually increased the temperature. But essentially we start at 120 and then we work up to about 140 degrees towards the end. But because there's not enough fat on this, I actually want to put it in my cast iron oven dish. Um, but any sort of oven tray would be fine if you don't have one of these. Um, 
So what I'm going to do is actually transfer that into the oven, which I should probably turn on. And I'm going to turn that to 130 degrees now. So the temperature's gone up by 10 degrees. So we're going to get that on 130. And then now what we're going to do is I'm going to just um, give this a little more spritz. This is literally just pure apple cider vinegar. Um, just a little spritz on there would be good. And then I'm going to put a little bit in there. And then this is a little mixture of 50-50 apple cider vinegar and then my barbecue sauce. If you want to check that recipe, you can head over to my barbecue ribs recipe and that's got the barbecue sauce recipe in there. I might uh, do a short edit of just that barbecue sauce recipe, but essentially it's um, two tins of tomatoes cooked down with sugar and vinegar uh, and a bit of seasoning. You cook that right down so it's all thick and nice. And then you add in uh, Worcestershire sauce, malt vinegar uh, and sugar and let that cook down. And that's essentially your barbecue sauce. So um, I've got quite a bit of that left over from when I did my ribs the other day. So what I'm gonna do is use my 50-50 mixture of half apple cider vinegar, half my barbecue sauce. And I'm just gonna put a base of this in here. I just wanna get that oh, all over the kitchen. Well done. Let's give that a wipe up. We don't wanna, it's probably gonna stain because it's got tomato in it. So spray that all over the kitchen and then take your, um, I might actually also, this is my uh, barbecue sauce and I've just warmed that through just so it's not stone cold because it's been in the fridge because I don't want to, it will just adjust, you know, cool everything down too much. So I'm just going to put a bit more of that in the bottom of here. Mix that round a touch. Pop that to one side and then this, this will be quite hot, but it won't be like ridiculously hot. So if you have heat proof fingers like me, just be careful not to like rip off any of the seasoned sort of crustiness on there. So that's awesome. So that's in there. Wash my hands quick. Then what I'm gonna do with our little 50-50 mix is just um, a little drizzle over everything just to kind of moisten some things up. I've got a bit of a blockage. Oh, you little bugger. There we go. There's a few nice little bits in there. I'm just gonna rub that over. Just so it rubs into everything. And now I'm kind of um, winging this a bit because this isn't a traditional way that you'd make a barbecue brisket, but because I didn't get the right sort of brisket with all the fat on it, um, I had to kind of adapt a little bit because essentially what the fat will do is help keep everything moist, like on top, it kind of protects it. But because this hasn't got that, I didn't think that that way was gonna work very well. So I'm kind of adapting and trying this out. So, I'm gonna grab our, this is our thicker tomato, not tomato, our barbecue sauce. And then I'm just gonna put that just carefully on top. And this is, I've warmed this up, so this is a bit hot. So just be careful if you use your fingers to spread it around. And we're just gonna kind of coat all this over the brisket. Now what this is gonna do is kind of protect the brisket soak into it a bit with all the flavors and it's going to uh, make it taste awesome as well and it's going to keep everything nice and juicy as well because I'm, I'm going to cover this with foil and then it's going to go in the oven and um, cook for I mean I'm not actually sure we're going to put 130 degrees for let's say three hours and then we'll come back to it and we'll turn up the temperature by 10 degrees up to 140 and give it another couple of hours. Because apparently what happens with a brisket, once it gets to an internal temperature, um, after about four or five hours, it can kind of firm up quite a lot, but it's at that point that you want to actually turn the heat up and give it longer and get that internal temperature higher um, 
because it starts to render the fat down which then starts releasing all the flavor and the kind of juiciness into the meat so that's the plan i might save a little bit of that sauce for potential drizzly garnish at the end so that's good so that's kind of it we've got a nice bit of juice around here we've covered the whole thing rubbed it in in places um and that's kind of it really what we're going to do now is cover it in foil and then pop it in the oven on 130 degrees and we're going to give it three hours and then we'll come back and do the next stage cheers guys so essentially what we do is i'll just go through the process again we take the brisk out give it about half hour 40 minutes out out the fridge trim off any rough bits of fat rub in mustard sprinkle with our salt pepper paprika mixture and then on like on all sides and then we put it into my smoker for three hours on 120 degrees now if you don't have a smoker and you're going to just do the oven then put it uncovered in the oven uh, for that time uh, you might need to put in a little dish of water in the oven with it just to keep the humidity up like i did in the barbecue um, but it, i mean that's up to you and then follow the same process take it out cover with the sauce wrap it turn the heat up to 130 three hours then turn the heat up to 140 for a further three hours and that's like a nine hour cook time which is probably about right for this size of brisket if i had a bigger brisket i'd probably go a little bit longer but i think this is about right now the way we can tell if i just grab this out of the oven the way that we can tell and, and i've zoomed in, in a bit closer for this so you can see what's going on a bit more clearly because we're not going to be doing any chopping sorry that's an airplane the best thing to do is just get a uh, like a cotton towel or tea towel or something and just um push down onto the brisket and it should be like really kind of spongy and soft so you can if you're not sure if it's had long enough then you can get it out the oven and just give it this little test and that's like it's super soft and squishy it seems like so that's probably about right for me that that's great so what we can do now once we've taken it out of the oven is we leave that to rest for let's say another 45 minutes to an hour um if you've got a dinner party and you're cooking it for that if you've got it like super early and you're having a dinner party in the evening and you want to make this then about an hour before you want to eat get it to this point take it out the oven and you can just put it to one side um, if it's super cold in the winter or something just put like a tea towel over it like that and that will just keep in a bit of extra heat and that will just do its thing and that's going to kind of finish off cooking it's going to relax and just all the juices are going to come out of it um, the main thing to do at this point is to make sure you are doing this check with the um, that it's nice and squishy and soft there's only so much you can do from here like if you were doing it in the barbecue you'd wrap it together all in one thing and you could actually pick it up and kind of feel it and see if it's kind of soft in, in places and where it's a bit firm but we can't really do that here so i'm just trying to judge it by how squishy it is there and that's feeling pretty good so i'm going to take the risk and say that's cool nine hours sorted we're going to let that rest for one hour and then we're going to come back okay here we go everybody we are back we have rested this for about an hour just about i lost patience that's so 55 minutes but it's close enough and you can still feel there's quite a bit of uh heat in this thing so let's see if it worked or if i completely messed it up hopefully it works now when you're opening something like this up and it's been hot and steamy inside it i always open up the far end and open backwards so the steam goes away from you rather than in, in towards you um, because you can uh, burn yourself quite badly with that sometimes so um, it might end up actually steaming up the camera but let's hope not and then when you first get it open just watch out because the steam might try and escape and um, get you and hot steam is very painful so well obviously not too bad okay here we go see that's good it hasn't really burnt too much a bit of the top has maybe gone a bit crispy crispy but it's not too bad let's get a spoon everyone see that right it's quite dark with the light but so let's just get all this nice liquid and just pour that 
through everything. So it's probably by turning it up to that 140, and because I had all the sauce on there, that probably just pushed it a bit far on this top bit, but it's okay. It will be fine. So I'm just pouring this liquid through it. And there's a bit of oil in there, but it's not too bad. Now I'm gonna move this across to the side so we can get the brisket out and chop it so you can have a look at it. So, pretty awesome. Now the irony is, because I didn't get up early enough, I'm not actually hungry now, because I had to eat some dinner earlier. I had some of my leftover chicken and sweet corn soup, which was particularly good. So, get like a serrated edge knife. That tends to work best when cutting this thing. And um, we need to somehow get it out of there, but it's too hot for me to pick up. So we need to make some sort of uh, elaborate tong and spoon situation. So I've got a kind of heavy duty pair of tongs and like a wooden spatula -y thing. So that should help me get the thing out. Hopefully it's not gonna fall apart, but this is where we potentially mess the thing up. And it's feeling like super soft and pliable and kind of squishy and awesome. So I don't actually know how I'm gonna get this bugger out, but you can be with me on this journey and we'll see if I get it out or completely mess it up try not to swear some of the juice drip off it and look at that bad boy <laughs> coated in all that delicious homemade barbecue sauce i've got loads of liquid left in the uh in this pan so we'll be able to like drain that off maybe skim some of the fat off and then we'll get a nice kind of sauce from that that we can dribble over it so there we go look at that brisket that is pretty beautiful so i'm going to try if i can and um, I don't know which end to do first, whether to do that end or this end, or maybe we'll do the fat end. I want, I want you to be able to see. There's probably a clever way to chop this. Like if you watch the Franklin's barbecue tutorial on his like briskets, he chops it in a really specific way, but I can't for the life of me remember what he did to so. say. So I'm just gonna try and cut a few slices. Now I'm not gonna cut the whole thing because I'm not gonna be able to eat all this tonight because it's impossible. I need like 10 people here, but what I, what I feel is that it will actually reheat better altogether and then cut it in the next few days. So I'm going to just cut off a few slices for the minute, which I'm going to try and then have, you know, tomorrow, or whatever. And then I'll leave the rest as one big chunk and then I can just reheat it in chunks then because it will definitely reheat better in, um, in big, in big chunks for sure. So, um, look, if you put it in, it's just all squishy. It's just like sort of melted butter or something. So here we go. So we're gonna, oh yes, look at that. That is just, uh, and then I'm gonna do about a centimeter thick cuts cause it's quite soft. So, and just a sort of gentle kind of soaring motion. Oh yeah, look at that. Nice and juicy and delicious. And I should probably take a photo of this for the uh, thumbnail. Yeah, look at that. I mean, it's just really, really juicy and delicious. I'm gonna just take an end off here and just so I can try it to see if it actually tastes any good, which it should do. Mm, yeah, it's good. So it's got a kind of sweet, sour note to it and the kind of smoky kind of beef flavors there. The sauce, maybe I could have added the sauce a bit later because the heat and the sugars in it might have caramelized it a bit, but it's pretty good. Um, sorry about the eating on the microphone. Yeah, so that's um, super, super duper tasty. I might just do one more cut if I can. I don't know if it's gonna to hold together, probably not. I mean, you can just see it just literally falling. And you gotta just be really light cuts of it really as well. I mean, it's juicy and just pulling apart really and just really tender and yeah, that's awesome. Pretty nice. So yeah, so there we go. So there's my brisket, worked really well pretty happy with that. I mean, I'm just going to pull a bit of this off. 
Yeah, the meat's got a nice subtle smoky flavour to it. It's not too overpowering. I think that three hours of smoking was about right. It's just really subtle smokiness. It's juicy. The sauce isn't too sweet. It's got a nice tartness to it, but also lots of flavour, a bit of sourness from the vinegar. You could probably have gone a bit, I could have probably gone a bit sweeter with this sauce. Like I could have sweetened that sauce up before I put it on, but I think any sweeter and it might have burnt more. So yeah, that's pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. So there's my brisket. What was it? Nine hours pretty much or 10 hours with resting time. So as long as you prepare it plenty in advance, you can knock this up and it's pretty simple really. I mean, the process was pretty basic. Just put the stuff on. It's just a cooking time really, which it's, um, you know, if you're, if you're gonna be at home all day, get up at, um, I don't know, 7.30, 8am and get it on and you can be eating by, um, you know, early evening. Um, so yeah, great. And once it's resting in this, leave it covered and you could probably leave that for an hour and a half because it's kept the heat in really nicely and it's, and it's still nice and juicy. So yeah, you could easily, you know, have that for a dinner party in the evening, cook it in the morning. And you can serve it with like pickles, coleslaw, potato salads, normal a mixed salad. You could do some roast potatoes or wedges, or even oven chips, um, and just mix up what you have with it. Something with some nice sweet, soury notes like pickles and stuff like that would be really nice with this. Even some kimchi would be really good or some sauerkraut. Um, yeah, so yeah, so that's that. That worked really well. I'm really happy with that. So that's the brisket. Um, for the sauce recipe, you can check out my first uh, barbecue ribs recipe and that's got that sauce recipe in there. I'll see if I can put up a, a shorter video for that in a few days. Um, so you can just have that as a concise sort of barbecue sauce recipe. Um, and yeah, there we go, pretty tasty. I'm gonna eat some of this now and uh, watch some cricket because the big bash is on, which is all good. So cheers for tuning in. Uh, hit, hit subscribe and like and share and if you're enjoying this and uh, we'll have more videos up soon. I've got a few tasty videos coming um, and then we're gonna be kind of into the, back into the work weeks soon. So I'll be cooking kind of good, quicker, simple recipes to eat, you know, after I've gone to the gym and, um, you know, when I'm a bit short of time. So hopefully we'll have some good recipes for that. So, um, yeah, cheers everybody. And we'll see you all soon.